Friedonk on the 13, closing in on P.J. Wanderscheid. Matt Schultz led every lap but the last at the World Championship six days ago. He's got some motivation from that. And Nick Van Strydock is coming. The champ is coming through the field, now fighting for a spot in the top three. You are watching the best in the world racing each other hard for a spot on the podium at the Wausau 525. Back in the pack, Spencer Groff on the 97 Skidoo and Ryan Niskern on the Arctic Hat going at it. We are coming to the white flag. It's Matt Schultz with Van Strydock second after battling past Johnson, Moyle, and Wandershy. Less than a lap to go, and it's Wausau's own in the Wausau 525. Matt Schultz with a win in Saturday's Pro Champ Final, ahead of Van Strydonk and Wandershy. It's pretty special, you know, uh, that's what we come here to do, and uh, guys are working hard, sled's working good, and uh, just got out front and uh, never looked back, you know, just uh, really happy for me, you know, for me and for all the guys, you know, they work hard in Skidoo, and, and uh, it just means a lot to us, and uh, it's pretty cool to keep the cup here at Wausau again for Saturday. On Sunday, they'll prepare to do it all over again. And it's a picture-perfect day for snowmobile racing. We decided that Saturday will be the, the Champ 440 Central Wisconsin Triple Crown Final, and then Sunday will be the TLR Cup. And they're racing for over $120,000 in that, in that series. So it, it works out really well for us. It gives us two full days, two full, full sets of, uh, of finals and qualifiers, so people can come on Saturday and see everything. They can come on Sunday and see everything. The fans are here early to catch all the Sunday action as drivers try to race their way into the final. We're off in round number one. That's Gary Moyle first off the line, leading Spencer Groff on the 97 and Brad Bettine's 20 sled into the corner. And we've got a driver off on the back stretch. The sled going over on the ice oval. Bruce Majeski throws out the red flag. Boy, that looked bad but Joel Diamond is up on his feet. The crowd is liking this, and they'll really like this. Diamond bruised, but back on the O2 skidoo, getting back in the race. If you're a fan, you have to appreciate that kind of effort. Back to green flag racing. It's a complete restart, and this time it's the 33 skidoo of Malcolm Chartier out front, with Moyle second on the Arctic Cat, and Spencer Groff's 97 skidoo running third. This is a fast field. Back behind the leaders, that is 16-year-old Matt Ritchie in fifth place on the 355 Polaris. He has his work cut out to catch up to the leaders. It's the Michigan drivers up front. Chartier on the 33, Moyle on the 66. Running in third in his best run of the weekend is Woodruff, Wisconsin's Brad Bettine on the number 20 Polaris. Chartier is looking good in this one. The Michigan driver working with two-time world champion Mike Poole as part of that race team. The 33 has led since the restart, holding off a charge in Gary Moyle on the Arctic Cat. Today, every position counts in the battle for the TLR Cup, and that includes the heat races. Malcolm Chartier will get it done in this one, taking the first checkered flag on the day. It's putting some money back into the racers, making it more competitive, making it making it so where it, it gives you maybe more of a drive if, you're, if you need some more money for your race team. You know, and also the, the triple crown. Former world champions P.J. Wanderscheid and Matt Schultz lead the field into heat number two. Another fast field here. Green flies and it's Schultz first off the line with the hole shot. The 38 has been fast off the starting line all weekend, and that is such a big part of oval racing. Schultz leads with Wanderscheid right there in second and Brandon Johnson third on the 22. You know this hometown driver would love to carry the momentum from winning the Saturday final into Sunday. But trouble, Matt Schultz in the bails. The 2010 world champ with a hard hit. Right away, the red flag is out. Everyone is hoping he's okay, but not the case. Matt Schultz is out of the running and out for the season with a broken bone in his lower leg. It's the second year in a row his season has ended on Sunday in the 525. On the restart, P.J. Wanderscheid inherits the lead, and this could be trouble for the field. We're green, and it's Wanderscheid leading the pack and looking strong. He's followed by Johnson, Ryan Nisker, Dustin Wall, and Cardell Potter on the 58 Skidoo. P.J. Wanderscheid has won the last three Sunday finals here. Brandon Johnson took the crown back in 08. And here comes Dustin Wall on the 74. You know a lot of work was done to try to get that sled right after Saturday's crash. Once again, this is a very fast field. 
all made the World Championship final last weekend. It's Wanderscheid, Johnson, Wall, Niskern, and Potter. Articat, Polaris, and Skidoo all represented in the field. It is Sox Center Minnesota's P.J. Wanderscheid holding down the top spot on the 28th. Johnson is also out of Minnesota from the small community of Holt in the northern part of the state. And these two will have the field covered in this one. It's P.J. Wanderscheid gunning for four in a row in the 5-2-5 and shooting for that TLR Cup. You see races come and you see races go, but you, you know this is a major commitment on their part to you know have a race every year. You know this type of work and this type of stuff, the type of effort that they put into this racetrack is really second to none. World champs Nick Van Strydonk and Brian Busick are lined up in heat three. But on the green, it's Jordan Wall, the 747 Polaris, first off the line and flying into the corner. This kid is not shy about lining up against the very best. But watch the 13. Nick Van Strydonk is showing the form that won the world championship last Sunday and puts that white Polaris up front. We'll see if anyone has anything for the champ. He is followed by Trevor Fontaine. A good run for the Webster, Wisconsin driver on the Articat. Travis McDonald's third, with Jordan Wall back there in fourth place. You are seeing the world champion at the top of his game. The 21-year-old former high school cross-country standout trains as hard as anyone out here. In second, Travis McDonald has that number eight skidoo running strong. He is sore after a hard crash last week. And Fontaine holds down third on the number three sled. Also looking fast. Chasing down Nick Van Strydunk, though, is another story. The champ is extending his lead over the field. Farther back, it's Jordan Wall on the 747 Polaris and former world champion Brian Busick on the 39. The laps click off mighty fast in these heats, and this one will go to the world champion. Nick Van Strydunk is yet another driver giving his all to win the TLR Cup. Uh, we race every weekend hard together, and uh, you know, we're always trying to better ourselves, and there's no better way to better yourself than to uh, race with the best. We'll shuffle the deck in round two. Green flies in heat one with a 0-2 skidoo of Joel Diamond leading the pack off the starting line and into the corner. Talk about coming back strong. Diamond crashed on the first lap of his first heat. Here in round two, he is leading the pack with Nick Van Strydonk running second on the number 13 Polaris. Diamond's a veteran of enduro racing, and he has made the world championship final in the past. Here it's the current world champ on the charge and making his move to take over the lead. Farther back, it's the Polaris sleds of Matt Ritchie and Dustin Wall racing for position. Nick Van Strydonk hails from Tomahawk, less than an hour from here. The world champion has a lot of fans in Wausau. He is leading Diamond, who's running a strong second. Wall in third, battling to drive that 74 Polaris into the final. These heats are where you earn the points to make it. Nick Van Strydonk is flat getting it done. A week removed from winning the world title, he is in position to win his fourth pro champ heat in five tries. Young Guns Travis McDonald and Matt Ritchie racing for the fourth spot. Up front, it's Nick Van Strydonk with his second win on the day. The world champion racing with a lot of confidence this weekend. The crew never argues or complains or, you know, they just work their butt off. So it's a, it's a whole team effort. Um, and we, we've been fortunate enough to uh, get noticed by a lot of people, uh, Polaris and, and uh, a lot of big, big names. So they've helped us quite a bit. And without them, we wouldn't be able to do it. A field of young guns and a two-time world champion line up for Heat 2. We're green and it's the 747 of Jordan Wall and the 39 of Brian Busick leading a very tight field into the corner and through turns one and two. Brian Busick has battled all weekend after that first lap incident on Saturday, but he has the number 39 skidoo out front in this one. The veteran out of Winnipeg, Manitoba is a tough customer, but he is under pressure from Malcolm Chartier. The Fairhaven, Michigan skidoo racer took his first round heat and Chartier will take the lead from Busek. The 33 sled is looking strong, and Chartier will be a driver to reckon with today. He leads Cardell Potter on the 58 Skidoo, and Trevor Fontaine on the black number three Arctic Cat. You have got to race hard to hold your position here. There is competition everywhere. Fontaine now racing with Jordan Wall's 747 Polaris and the Skidoo of early leader Brian Busek. 
This is another fast-moving heat. Up front, it's Chartier and Potter. The Skidoo drivers running one and two, setting the pace. We are on the last lap, and Malcolm Chartier will go back to back in his first two heat races. He is one of the many drivers who appreciates the safety features of the new Wausau 525 facility. I really appreciate a lot of hay bales, also ice pits, everything being ice so you can drive out on the ice. It doesn't wear the crew down over the weekend from pushing your sled out to there and back. You know, having everything ice in the facility is very nice. And also making it easy for the spectators to watch the higher berms around the track. It's very nice, spectator friendly. They can watch everything and, and see everything. It's nice. Final heat in round two is ready for the green and we're off. It's Brandon Johnson on the number 22 wall Polaris out front. Former world champions Gary Moyle and P.J. Wanderscheid among the drivers trying to chase down the 22. As the field comes around, it's Johnson, Wanderscheid on the 28, Ryan Niskern on the 616 Articat, Brad Bettine and Gary Moyle battling for the fourth spot. Brandon Johnson sat on the pole for the world championship a week ago. P.J. Wanderscheid, the four-time world champion, is shooting for his fourth straight trophy in Wausau. Johnson on the Polaris, leading Wanderscheid on the Articat. Farther back, Gary Moyle did not get the start he wanted, but the two-time former world champion is on the move. Moyle's charging on the 66, making his move on Ryan Niskern. Brad Bettine on the number 20, right there in the mix. Every position counts in these heats. Brandon Johnson has led this race from the drop of the green flag. He is looking to lead at the checkers, and the laps are ticking off fast. The hard charger from Holt, Minnesota, will top a pair of former world champions in taking the final heat in round two. And Brandon Johnson is all about challenging for that TLR Cup. Uh, the TLR Cup is a huge deal. Um, Tommy Lapar has put a lot of time and effort and a lot of money into this, and uh, he's got some sponsors that helps. Uh, great thanks to him. and. Uh, you know, it, I think it helps bring in uh, a lot more fans and a lot more racers into it. Um, you know, it's a lot of money and everybody's going for a big paycheck. We had a good crowd on Saturday, but look at the turnout today. Time for the first heat in round three. Green flies and it's Travis McDonald on the number eight skidoo first off the line with a whole field right on his heels going through the corner. McDonald's teammates with two-time world champion Brian Busick and this kid can get it done. He'll lead Malcolm Chartier on the 33, Trevor Fontaine's number three, and Matt Ritchie's 355 sled as we complete lap one. McDonald's only 18 years old, but he is a two-time qualifier for the World Championship final. Can he hold off Chartier, who took a win in the first round today? We are going to find out soon. Behind the leaders, it's Ritchie on the Polaris, Fontaine's Articat, and the 616 cat of Ryan Niskern. You would never know it, but Travis McDonald crashed hard only a week ago. He is bruised up, but these guys know all about playing hurt. Bruises do not keep these guys on the sideline. He is holding on to the lead. Trevor Fontaine slows coming out of two, and the red flag is out. Matt Ritchie's off his 355 Polaris, and he's hurting, but up to his feet. That's good to see. We'll restart with only three sleds left in the field. McDonald's led all the way. If Chartier or Niskern have anything for the young Canadian, now is the time to show it. You have to hand it to our leader. Travis McDonald's world championship run ended with a ride in an ambulance. Today, he'll ride the number eight skidoo to a heat race win. Got a pretty sore arm, but uh, we're gonna try our best and see how we finish. We've been doing good for the start of the day, so we'll see how we can finish it off. World champions Nick Van Strydock, P.J. Wanderscheid, and Gary Moyle among the drivers on the line in heat number two. We're green and it's Moyle on the 66 Articat first to the corner. This should be something to watch. It's Moyle leading fellow Michigan driver Joel Diamond on the 02 Skidoo. Dustin Walls third on the 74 Polaris with Wanderscheid fourth on the number 28 Articat and Van Strydock fifth on the white 13 Polaris. How about this? Joel Diamond and Dustin Wall right there in the mix trying to chase down Moyle. And you have to think Wanderscheid and Van Strydonk are going to be contenders before this one's over. Gary Moyle won three heats on Saturday. He's looking for his first checkered flag today. The 66 is looking strong and this one might go his way. 
You can see how hard these drivers have to race to take a heat win. Diamond, Wall, and Van Strydonk.